welcome back to another edition of the Gadget Lab Show. I'm Michael Calori. And I'm Matt Honan. And Matt, what is this lovely device that you have here? This is the Microsoft Surface RT, which is uh, Microsoft's new tablet. Uh, you reviewed this for us on Wired.com. Very good, very, uh, very long and balanced review. I did. I, 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 it was very long. Um, <laughs> But you I liked did, it. You I liked did. it I as like a it device, a yeah. as a platform. I like it a lot. It's it's a it's a great device. Very solid piece of hardware. Uh, it's got this really interesting little touchpad keyboard or touch cover. It's called mm -hmm. that uh, lets you type on the same thing that serves as your tablet cover. Very cool. Uh, it's also got this backside kickstand so that you can set it up and type on it. It's got a lot of stuff, but not a lot of programs. Right, so that's the big question. Now, Microsoft is releasing this this week, and it's yeah. available. You can buy it. You've been able to pre-order it for a couple of weeks. So people are going to get these. They're going to take them home, open up, and then what are they going to be able to do on them? I mean, you mentioned it's a laptop replacement. Like, it has the productivity apps you'd expect yeah. from a Microsoft product, right? It's a very basic laptop replacement. Like, like it's, you know, you'll be able to do stuff in Office, browse the web, send email, um, but it's 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 not going to have the you know kind of power user specs that, that you may want or power user programs that you may want. It's not going to have like it's got an email client, but the email client is kind of uh, and it's got the big stuff. It has Netflix, Kindle, Netflix. things like that, but not a lot of games yet. Not a lot of games yet. Not a lot of good games yet. There are a lot of games in there, but there probably aren't a lot that you're going to want to <laughs> play. Um, but well, you know, I would expect sort of like a gold rush. When this thing first gets out, you know, a lot of people are going to want to get into the app, to, into their app store. What are they calling it? The Microsoft. Microsoft. I think it's called the Windows Store. The Windows Store. So yeah. a lot of people want to get into the Windows Store right away, start making apps to these devices, start making money, and like stake their claim. Um, but it, it still still is going to suffer from the volume problem. Are they going to sell enough of these where people who aren't part of that initial rush are going to want to? go there and develop something to run on it to make it more useful. I, I, it, it definitely has this chicken and egg problem, you know. I mean, people aren't going to buy it right away because it's not going to have tons of apps like the iPad does. Mm -hmm. uh, and people, are, you know, app developers aren't necessarily going to develop for it because there aren't a ton of customers yet. But something to keep in mind is that you can write an app for the Windows Store that will run on a lot of devices other than just the Surface. It's not. Uh, it's not quite like the iPad in that there's only one device because anybody who's a Windows uh, manufacturer can put out uh, you know versions of Windows RT, versions of Windows 8 that you can also sell your apps mm -hmm. in the Windows Store and, and get to those customers as well. So I might have a you know a, a an HP or a Lenovo device that could also run um, an app. It doesn't have right. to be the Surface. And there are there is literally a flood of. Windows RT hardware coming down the pipe right now. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I think I, I, I think the technical term for it is a dump truck load. I'm not a, sure what it is. a dump truck yeah. load. So, uh, do do you think that it still makes a sensible purchase if somebody's considering a tablet, uh, a sensible purchase uh, instead of an iPad from an app perspective, purely from an app perspective? Purely from an app perspective, it, it doesn't come close to the iPad. You know, there's a uh, if you're looking at it just from from am I going to be able to go in and find basically every app that I can think of and and you know play great games, have you know all kinds of weird add-ons that let me do interesting things. No, it, it doesn't have that, and it, and it's probably not going to have that for a while. You know, I'm talking at least months. I mean, who mm -hmm. knows? Uh, and you know if. The way I look at this is this is very much a you know a, a new platform and it already does some very cool things like it already does this really interesting hybrid thing of letting you type on it. I mean it's built for typing. You can mm -hmm. use a Bluetooth keyboard with an iPad, but I've never found it totally satisfying. But what it doesn't do is do all that extra fun stuff with apps that iPads do. Okay, well thank you for bringing by the device and showing it to us. And by the way, you can read Matt's full review and watch his video review on wired.com slash reviews and you can continue to read coverage of um, uh, Windows RT and the Surface Tablet and all things Microsoft on Gadget Lab and now we're going to bring on Robbie to talk about e-readers. Yay Robbie. Roberto Baldwin is here. Hi. Hi. And you brought some uh, fancy new e-readers. I did bring some fancy new e-readers. E Let's start with the first one which is 
the Kobo Glow. This is Kobo's answer to the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light and the Kindle Paperwhite. It has a glowing screen, which is actually really, really nice. That's very cool. I, um, the it, yeah, it's a really nice glow screen, and uh, the the contrast on this screen is actually really good too. So um, I'm working on a review right now of this, and I'm, I'm I'm impressed so far. That's cool. And actually, my favorite thing about that before you put it away is that um, you know there's this thing on e-readers called like garbage collection or full screen refresh. That it, it, the screen looks kind of dull, and then you flip through a few pages, and all of a sudden you get a screen that's super clear. It doesn't actually fully refresh the screen until every you know five or six or seven uh, screen refreshes. This lets you select. So if it's really bothering you, you can have it. You can have it refresh the screen every page flip, or if one to six page flips. So you can do like three pages, four pages, five pages, one page. Um, yeah. The Kindle, the Paperwhite lets you do it every page if you want. You can set it that way. Yeah. Uh, but this will let you set that if you know you're seeing a lot of artifacts or something. I haven't seen any um, issues with it, but it, it, that that level of uh, of uh, you know enhancement to your reading is pretty awesome. Yeah, and I think it's great that that's becoming a standard because that's people's biggest complaint about e-readers. It's all oh, the screen's kind of, eh. but you know if you get the opportunity to refresh it every page if you want, if you're that kind of person, then now you have it finally. So I think it's been a long time coming. So props to Kobo for that one. Um, Kobo also has something that I got really excited about. I'm, I'm not really excited about the iPad Mini because I'm not really excited about tablets in general. <laughs> um, personally, I mean, I, and, and you know, for people out in the world who love tablets, yay. Uh, but I got excited <laughs> about this. This showed up. It's the Kobo Mini. It's a teeny tiny little e-reader. It's really small. It's really, it's so cute. I, 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 I squealed when I saw it. I didn't squeal, but I went woohoo, which is like a dude squeal, I think. <laughs> this one does not light up. It does not light up. It is a touch screen. You can, you know, back and forth. And how much does that cost compared to the bigger one? This is $89. Okay. Um, I can't remember the price of that one. Oh, okay. Womp womp. <laughs> It'll be in the review. It'll be in the review. So $89 is a lot to spend. Uh, you can spend like 10, 15 bucks less than that and get a Kindle with buttons. You can get, yeah, you can get the Kindle, uh, just a regular old. $69 Kindle with buttons and uh, but with ads if you hate ads. Anyway. Well, okay. But this what is awesome what, what if I want to spend maybe like 20 bucks on an e-reader? If you want to spend 20 bucks on the e-reader, we have the Texter. This is a country out of Germany, Beagle. <laughs> it's, a, it's a country out of Germany. It's a country out of Germany <laughs> called Germany. It's an e-reader out of Germany. Um, this company Texter, uh, they have this e-reader and you can't actually just buy this e-reader. It's actually pretty impressive for you know something that's under twenty bucks. Um, that's it, just crazy. Yeah, man. it's they're 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 saying that they're they're wanting to uh, add it as part of subsidized uh, smartphone sales. Uh. So you could get it for like thirteen bucks in addition to buying your iPhone um, from AT and T, Verizon, Sprint, whoever you buy your smartphones from. And so I buy a smartphone, and then it comes with for an extra fee, like headphones and this. And this thing, yeah. What if I just want the e-reader? What if I already have a phone? They they don't have a price yet for just the e-reader. Okay. They they are very they they, they really want to uh, sell this with smartphones because it doesn't have Wi-Fi. Mm. Like you can't get online with it. All it does is read. It has Bluetooth. And you sync it with a uh, with right now with an Android phone, but eventually with an Android and iOS phone. And you download the books on your smartphone, and then you sync them over here. That's very cool. But it runs on two AAA batteries, and it'll last 10 to 15 books. Wow. Which they figure is about a year. That's about a year. It's 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 kind of cool. I like the little the little thing yeah, for the battery. It's it's a nice. It's little actually it's it's a great little natural handle. Yeah. And and it's only got three buttons: forward, back, and home. <laughs> That's yeah. it. It's very cool. The Texture Beagle. So hopefully we'll see this uh, for sale as a standalone device. But until then, um, when do they think it's going to hit the U.S. market? They're still uh, trying to iron out. You know, they, they're they're in talks. Everyone's always in talks with they're people. Talks. But it's uh, we got one, and um, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you for the fancy German e-reader and the fancy Canadian e-readers. Kobo's a Canadian company. Canadian. Uh, it's International Day here on the podcast. <laughs> and uh, Robbie's going to have reviews of all this stuff, which you can read at Wired.com. And until then, we'll see you next time on the Gadget Lab. Bye.